I heard a conversation between black men today that I found disturbing. The central thesis of the conversation, the grounding narrative of this conversation between beta males, as I will call them, was that if black women don't want black men marrying cave bunnies, if black Women don't want black men marrying cave bunnies, then black women should stop black men from marrying cave bunnies by becoming better black women. Let me say this again. I'm not going to keep you, but I had to address this here. These Negroes said with a straight face that if black women don't want to lose black men to white women, cave bunnies, if the black woman doesn't want to lose the black man to a snow bunny, then she needs to become a better black woman and she needs to get in between the black man and the white woman. I have a problem with that. I have, why is it the black woman's job to stop you from committing racial suicide? Why is it the black woman's job to stop you from committing economic suicide? Why is it the black woman's job to stop you from sabotaging the traditional black family? Why is it the black woman's job to stop the black man from committing to a cave bunny? If I am for my people, if I am for my race, if I am for our children, if I am for our women, the black woman doesn't have to do anything for me to do right by my people. The black woman should not have to be the black man's interventionist. If you're telling me that you need the black woman to stop you from being with a white woman, you're not worthy of being called a black man. You're not worthy of being called a black man. If you're telling me that the black woman has to stop the black man from going to the white woman, you're not worthy of being called a black man. Yes, black women have problems. Black women have problems, yes. Black men have problems, yes. We as a people have problems, yes. But don't make her an excuse for why you hate yourself. Don't make the black woman an excuse for why you take your education, your income, your earnings, your wealth, your investments, your retirement. Don't make her the scapegoat for why you want to go run around with Becky and Suzanne and Elizabeth, and Patsy. Don't make the black woman the excuse for why you have jungle fever. It has nothing to do with her. It has nothing to do with her. The reason you go outside your race is because you don't think you're the equal of the white man. And if you're not the equal of the white man, the black woman can't be the equal of the white woman. And so you go and get a cave bunny in order to make you feel better about yourself. See, by making the black woman inferior in your mind to the white woman, by saying the black woman isn't good enough for the white, is a good, isn't as good as enough. As the white woman, you're also saying the black man isn't as good as the white male. See, you can't say her blackness 
is less than the white woman's pale skin without at the same time indicting your own blackness. If she's not as good as the white woman, you're not as good as the white man. So I'm showing you how the inferiority complex of the Negro, and this is a pan-African issue. This is a pan-African issue. And what brought up the conversation, what brought up the conversation was the fact that we just lost a brother who was a top clothing designer, well-trained, well-educated brother. He was a top clothing designer. He died, rest in peace to him, condolences to his family. He married his high school snow bunny sweetheart. He married his high school snow bunny sweetheart, and now he's leaving behind a portfolio of creation, African talent, and he's leaving behind an estate worth tens of millions, if not billions of dollars, African finance and wealth. And he's leaving this to a snow bunny. And the excuse that some black men are giving me is it was okay for him to marry a cave bunny because he fell in love with her in high school. So now these beta males want to put time restrictions on when it's okay for black men to betray the black woman and get a woman from another race. So the argument is, the argument is, since he met her in high school, and this is no disrespect to him. We are analyzing the situation. We are not condemning the brother turned ancestor. I want to be clear. Respect to him and his family. Respect to him and his family. We're analyzing the political phenomena before us. Nothing more. If you're making the excuse that it's okay for a black man to marry a white girl if he falls in love with her in high school. That's unacceptable to me because he had no business being with her in high school and I'll blame his parents for that. Now, he was an African immigrant brother, but my brother nonetheless. He was an African immigrant brother, but my brother nonetheless. I don't care. It's not acceptable if he's 12. It's not acceptable if he's 21. It's not acceptable if he's 31, 41, 51, 61, 71, 81. He had no business dating outside the race. And see, this dialogue is so hurtful because as a race, we are fighting for our lives. We are fighting for the exist, the right to exist on planet Earth. The original people are fighting for the right to exist. And you bougie as beta males. You bougie ass beta males got the audacity. You bougie ass beta males got the audacity to try to make excuses. So if he falls in love with the cave bunny in high school, it's okay because she knew him as a teenager. And then y'all make the excuse. And then y'all make the excuse that she didn't want him for his money because they were dating in high school. Y'all make the excuse, these white girls don't want the black man for their money because they marry them in college. They marry the black man when he's broke. They're marrying the black man when he's at the beginning of his journey. They're marrying the black man when he's just starting his career. This is the excuse y'all make. Y'all say the black woman doesn't want a black man unless he already on top. In order for the black woman to take the black man serious, these bougie beta males argue that the black woman will only look at the black man if he didn't already leveled up. If he didn't already leveled up. Now, I'm not going to say that argument is totally without merit because there's some truth to that for some black women. We do have materialistic, selfish, Europeanized black women who won't look at you twice unless you already leveled up. That is very true. But it's not true for everybody. But here's the contradiction I want you to understand, overstand, and understand. 
Here's the contradiction that I want you to understand, overstand, and understand. You making the argument that the black woman will only get with the black man once he has succeeded. And that the white woman gets the black man when he's still broke. And you argue that since the white woman gets the black man while he's still broke, the white woman actually cared about him. You are totally wrong. You are totally wrong. The white woman who gets the broke but intelligent black man. The white woman who gets the broke but talented black man. The white woman who gets the broke but potential having black man is no different than the black woman who won't look at you until you leveled up. See, the difference between the white woman and the black woman, the opportunistic white woman and the opportunistic black woman, there's only one thing that separates them. The only thing that separates the opportunistic white woman and the opportunistic black woman, the scheming white woman and those few black women who scheme the only difference is the white woman knows how to pick out a good investment early and a black woman does not. I'm going to say it again. Let's understand, overstand, and understand. Let's understand, overstand, and understand. I'm going to say it again. The difference between the white female opportunist and the black female opportunist is the white female opportunist knows a good investment before. Four, she reaps a return. That's the only difference. The black woman doesn't understand investing. She only understands spending. And since she only understands spending, she won't see the potential. She won't see the greatness in the black man's schemes. She won't invest in it. She wants to see the final result. And that's why she loses out. The white woman will see his potential in high school. She will see his potential in college. She will see his potential in trade school. And the white woman will simply invest earlier. She goes along for the ride. So she has more control over the prize. I'm going to say it again. I'm going to say it again. I said the white woman gets in early. She can pick her slaves early. She get them early when they're broke and she goes along with the ride so she has greater control over the prize. That's the difference. That's the difference. That's the difference. The black woman, and I'm talking to my sisters out there. I'm talking to my sisters out there. You need to Take a half a page out of the Snow Bunny's book. And black women need to start investing and selecting black men with potential early on. Because what happens is before you meet the successful black man, the white woman had already snatched them up because she invested and selected in him early. So if the black woman doesn't start selecting her men before they become successful, I agree, she will lose them all. Because the white woman is a brilliant investor. She knows how to find. Look at the black athletes. And look at how most of the black Division I athletes are already engaged to white girls before they go to the NFL. They're already engaged before they go to the NBA. They're already engaged to the white girl when they leave high school. So the white girl identified the black man in high school. She identified the black man as a freshman in college. The white woman is taught to recruit the Negro early. Invest in him so you have more ownership of him. The black woman doesn't do that. And I'm not categorizing all black women. I'm talking about the ones who are so bent on getting a good man, but don't find him before he becomes what you need him to be. The white girl will find him. She will get pregnant. She will get engaged. She will do whatever she got to do. She hooks him early. Black women need you to win first. And because black women need you to win first, they often end up last.
Because black women want to see the black man win before she commits. She's losing the black man. She's lo White girls recruit the Negroes early. White girls recruit their Negroes early. Black women go man hunting after he got his PhD. The black woman wants to hunt for her man after he started his business. The black woman wants to hunt for her man after he got his master's degree. The black woman wants to help hunt for her man after he's an NFL or NBA. And I'm saying, it's too late. White girl don't wait until he's done. The white woman gets him when he begun. The white girl don't wait until he's done. The white girl gets him when he begun. The white girl don't wait until he's done. The black woman wants to wait until you're done climbing the mountain. The white girl don't wait until the black man's done climbing the mountain. She gets some as soon as he start going up the mountain. And black mothers got to do a better job. Black mothers got to do a better job of teaching black women. Get with him when he's early and ride with him. Get with him when he's just starting and you ride with that man. Because if you ride with that man, there's a great likelihood he will stand with you. It's a greater likelihood he will stand with you. See, white, black men get the white women that other white men don't want. Black men get the white women that other white men don't want. Black men get the white women that other white men don't want. So the castaway white girl, the white girl who couldn't get a top-notch white boy, Wants the top-notch black boy. Let me say it again. The white woman who could not get a top-notch white boy is determined to get a top-notch black boy. The white woman who doesn't get a top-notch white boy is determined to get a top-notch black boy. So she is focused. Her mother will tell her you're not going to get Bill Gates. You're not going to get Donald Trump. You're not going to get Bill Clinton. You're not going to get Mark Zuckerberg. You're not going to get them because you don't come from that background. Rich white men marry into money. They don't marry broke women. The only, the only rich men who marry broke white girls are black rich men. The only rich men who marry broke white women are rich black men. Rich white men don't marry broke white women. So if you want a millionaire, you have to get a Negro. They teach their daughters. If you want a millionaire, you will have to get a Negro because rich white men don't marry poor white girls. So the, the poor white girl already knows that if she don't have the last name she needs to be successful, she has to go into the ghetto and get some new black rich money. She has to get some politically uneducated Negro millionaire. See, the politically uneducated first generation Negro millionaire is the white woman's come up. The politically uneducated first generation Newly rich black millionaire is the white woman's come up. He's, he's the white woman's heaven. They look for the politically uneducated first generation black millionaires. Now I see there's a lot of beta males. There's a lot of snow bunny loving beta males in the chat. And to you Negroes, to you Negroes, if you don't like the message, why do you keep tuning into the messenger? If you don't like the message, why do you keep tuning into the messenger? Click off the live. This live is for unapologetically African alpha males and unapologetically African females. If you're not an unapologetically African alpha male or an unapologetically African female, hop off the live right now. Hop off the live right now. You are a beta, a bougie excuse having beta trying to use the black woman as a scapegoat and trying to use the black woman as an excuse and trying to use the black woman 
as your distraction from why you in love with non-melanated cookies. Nah, Negro, this ain't got nothing to do with the black woman. This is about yourself. Your integrity, your honor, your character. You went out the race because that's who you are. There's nothing weaker. There's nothing more tender. There's nothing more soft. There's nothing more, more moist than a black man to say that if the black woman don't want me marrying white girls, she needs to stop me. That is weak, that is cowardly, that is beta male, that is not conduct becoming a king. That is not a Shango trait. That is not an Ogun quality. Ogun men and Shango men would never say on YouTube or TV or radio, they would never say if the black woman doesn't want me marrying the white woman, she needs to stop me from marrying the white woman. That is ridiculous. You are moist. You are moist. You are tender. You are beta. Don't you ever use the black woman as an excuse for why you want to date outside your community. Negro, please. That's why we need the celebration in black masculinity Saturday night. I'm going to talk about this Saturday night in Margate, Florida. Oh, yes. We're going to deal with the snow bunny crisis. Seven o'clock Saturday, the event center, Margate, Florida. Get your tickets on Eventbrite. I'm going down. We're going to deal with this because there's no way we're going to talk about Shango power. There's no way we're going to talk about Orisha Shango power and we don't talk about this moist movement amongst bougie beta males. This moist movement amongst bougie black beta males that says it's the black woman's job to stop the black man from marrying white girls. Negro, please. We not having it. In the name of Dr. Amos Wilson, we not having it. In the name of Dr. John Henry Clark, we not having it. In the name of Dr. Yusuf Benyakinen, we not having it. In the name of Dr. Kwame Nkrumah, we're not having it. In the name of El Haj Malik El Shabazz, we're not having it. In the name of Kwame Ture, we're not having it. In the name of Patrice Lumumba, we're not having it. In the name of Robert Sabukwe, we're not having it. In the name of Julius Neary, we're not having it. In the name of Henry Holland Garnett, we're not having it. In the name of Nat Turner, we're not having it. Oh no, sir. Oh no, sir. I'm looking forward to Saturday's keynote. I'm looking forward to Saturday's keynote. We want to talk about black masculinity? Let's talk about it. Let's talk about all these black men who sit on YouTube, podcast after podcast, gossip session after gossip session, intellectual masturbation clinic after intellectual masturbation clinic, and we ain't got no institutions in our community. I'm rolling through the Instagram feed, and I'm seeing how this black man did this, and this black man did this, and this black man did this, and that's good. That's good. Support our brothers. They need it. But I don't see nobody celebrating nobody for opening a hospital. I don't see nobody celebrating nobody for opening up the clinic. I don't see nobody celebrating nobody for opening up the import export network, the manufacturing network. I don't see that. I don't see the independent schools. I don't see the black independent grassroots banks. Don't tell me we doing good. Until you can show me an independent black community in North America. Don't tell me we doing good until you can show me an independent black community in North America. That's black school, black bank, black hospital, black supermarket. Until you can show me that, black men, we are losing. And we don't have to be losing. And in order to overcome the loss, in order to flip this and go back to the throne. The throne of the black man is not a physical thing. The throne of the black man is not a chair laced with gold. The throne of a black man is not inside of some palace. The throne of the black man is when you can sit at the seat of your community 
and say, my women don't have to go to another man for anything. My children don't have to go to another man for anything. My elders don't have to go to another man for anything. For us to be the God kings that we want to be. For us to be the God kings that we should be. For us to be the divine masculine beings that Olo Dumare created us to be. We have to be able to look out for the best interests of every member of our race. And until the black man, I don't care if he in Africa, I don't care if he in Canada, I don't care if he in London, I don't care if he in Brooklyn, Philly, Texas, D.C., Maryland, Chicago, Detroit, Little Rock. I don't care if he's in Brazil, Jamaica, Haiti, or Cuba. I don't care if he's in Venezuela or Mexico until the black man can say, my race is all right because I made it that way. We can never call ourselves God kings. You have the potential to be a God king, but you're not a God king until you've taken care of our women. As long as a black woman got to go beg a white man for a job, we ain't serious. As long as black kids got to go to jail because they can't find a job, we ain't serious. And the last thing we better stop doing, the last thing we better stop doing is telling black women, it's your job to stop us from dating outside the race. Margate, Florida, celebration of black masculinity, total solar eclipse, Shango Power, event center, Margate, December 4th, 7 p.m. We gonna talk about it. West Palm Beach, Third Hour Bookstore, Sunday, December the 5th, Two to six free event. We're going to talk about it. Washington, D.C. Friday, December the 10th. The Anacostia Art Center. Free event. We're going to talk about it. This is the Prince. Hit the Cash App for FDMG. Hit the PayPal for FDMG. We rise together or we don't rise at all. It is pan-Africanism or perish. It is freedom for all Africans or freedom for no Africans. Peace and black power. Peace and pan-Africanism. Peace and pan-Africanism. Peace and pan-Africanism. Pan I want to remind everyone that I will be speaking in Margate, South Florida, this Saturday. Margate, South Florida, this Saturday. It is a dinner lecture celebrating divine masculinity. Divine masculinity. The occasion is the total solar eclipse. Total solar eclipse. The last one of this year. Shout out to all my Leos. Shout out to all my lady lions out there. Shout out to my Leos and my lionesses. We have a total solar eclipse coming up on December the 4th. And that very date, there will be a new moon in Sagittarius. That's Obatala's sign. And in Margate, South Florida, the Yoruba spiritual community, Ifa devotees, will be having an event to celebrate divine masculinity in honor of Orisha Shango, the Orisha of divine masculinity, leadership, kingship, royalty, black power, Orisha Shango. And if you're interested in coming to that event, it will be the first time outside of the Oyo Tunji African Village. It will be the first time for me outside of the Oyo Tunji African Village that I speak to, for, and with fellow Ifa devotees. So if you want to go to that event, it is a dinner lecture. You can text me for the link or you can go to Eventbrite and type in Celebration of Divine Masculinity. Saturday, December the 4th, Margate. For those of you who are not familiar, Margate is halfway between Fort Lauderdale and West Palm Beach. 
Margate is halfway between Fort Lauderdale and West Palm Beach. You cannot buy tickets at the door. You must get them beforehand. You cannot buy tickets at the door. You must get them beforehand. So for my South Florida Africans who are coming to the celebration of divine black masculinity, Saturday, December the 4th, 7 p.m., I look forward to seeing y'all. And then the next day on Sunday, December the 5th, I will go to West Palm Beach for the first time since 2014. The next day, Sunday, December the 5th, I will be in West Palm Beach at the Third Eye Bookstore. West Palm Beach, first visit in seven years. Third Eye Bookstore from two to six, conscious community conversation and Black Parent Advocate book release, totally free, no tickets, no registration. And that will be from two to six on Sunday, December the 5th. So it's a Florida, South Florida doubleheader. Margate dinner lecture, celebration of black masculinity, and then West Palm on Sunday, conscious community conversation. I wanna see who in South Florida ready to do some work. I wanna see who in South Florida ready to help Ifa Tunde build a new future for our black baby. So it's going down in South Florida. Washington, D.C., I will see you Friday, December the 10th from 6 until 10. Free event, but you do need to register if you can. Washington, D.C., first visit in two years. Friday, December the 10th from 6 till 10. Doors at 5. We will be at the Anacostia Art Center. That's the Anacostia Art Center in the neighborhood where the great ancestor Frederick Douglass lived. That is 1231 Good Hope